Welcome into Mac and Mose. Andy McNamara joined by the editor in chief of GoDucks.com, Rob Mosley. We are here to recap Oregon's first loss of the season, a 37 to 35 defeat down in the desert to the Arizona State Sun Devils. An unexpected result, I think, the way that the season started off for Oregon. 3 0, they were flying high. They were two touchdown favorites in this game. This was a game they were expected to win. Now, as a result, they're going to have to win a game maybe they, they weren't expected to win later in the season. Yeah, I think going into the year, there were other games that you probably looked at as bigger trap games. Uh, maybe that Nebraska game, maybe that Wyoming trip. Uh, and then when they get through those games, suddenly maybe this one became a trap game, I think. You know, maybe, maybe you had a an Oregon team that was feeling good about itself, pretty confident. And, uh, you know, as we saw with the way the game started, uh, just not clicking on all cylinders both ways. So uh, some lessons to be learned for sure as they clean it up and, and look ahead to the Cal game. I, I mentioned it last week. I thought that the Ducks were ranked maybe a week early. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with just Oregon's history of success over the last 20 years or so as a top 25 program. Ooh, Oregon's scoring a bunch of points. They're 3-0. and they're in the top 25. I think on the flip side, if Arizona State had had the same schedule and was 3-0, they wouldn't have been ranked. So, you know, they, they, you get the Oregon bump, maybe, if you will. And I'm not saying that the players bought into that or they, they, they thought of themselves as ranked, but it also gives Arizona State added motivation because right. now they're playing a top 25 team. And like you say, the way that Oregon started this game, they just couldn't get out of their own way. Penalties on seven of their first nine offensive drives at some point. The third down situation was was really a, a telling story in this game. One of 11 for the game. They had one third and five all game. Uh, the the every other third down was worse than that as far as as yardage. They had a third and three at one point, but immediately got a penalty to make it third and eight. So they were in third and long and second and long uh, all game long, and that that really just it was just too big of a hurdle to overcome. Yeah, I think it was 8.8 .8 yards to gain was the average third down play. Ducks were one of 11. Now, coincidentally, 8.8 .8 was also Arizona State's average yards per gain, to gain on third down, and they went 8 of 20. Um, I think a more representative uh, uh, percentage of what you'd expect to see from, from most college teams, around, around 40%. So they handled it certainly better than the Ducks did. Uh, just, just, but just protection issues and shooting themselves in the foot with, with penalties. And then, I, you know, I do think, you know, make no excuses is one of the mantras here, but, you know, that's when you, you miss Charles Nelson. One of the oh, things absolutely. I was, a uh, question I was getting a lot during the game was, you know, obviously attacking over the top a lot, obviously attacking underneath in the run game and with screens, but not a lot of an intermediate passing game. Well, Charles Nelson is a guy with the quickness off the line and in and out of his breaks to really get open, and he was such a safety valve for Justin Herbert. And I, I think we did see his, uh, his feel his absence in that game. Yeah, and this this isn't a, a slam against the young receiving core, but Justin Herbert was playing with a very inexperienced group in terms of, of collective games played, and uh, you know th those guys made some plays. But Charles Nelson or that type of receiver that we've seen over the years at Oregon, whether it's Devin Allen or Byron Marshall, guys that can get separation yeah. down the field. And I felt like every deep ball yesterday that Justin threw, it you know, is usually man coverage, but the man was right on the receiver. And it, it just there was never a situation where there was there was an opening. And and Charles gives you that guy. We did see one route, uh, I think Taj Griffin, similar to the, yes. the touchdown he yeah. caught the week before. But the pass rush got to Herbert, and the guy hit his arm, and so the ball didn't get there. But that was another a situation like that where you've got a guy who's quick like Taj, and he's able to create some separation, but they just couldn't take advantage. But yeah, most of the night those those plays just weren't there. It, you're looking at the at the numbers, and Oregon will not not nominate a player. Uh, for Pac-12 Player of the Week this week, offense, defense, special teams, Willie, uh, Coach Willie Taggart has, uh, has said, if we lose the game, you know, we're, we're not nominating anyone. Uh, but if you do dig into the numbers, Herbert's, Herbert's stats, when you consider that, that uh, the Ducks were sort of hamstrung at receiver in this game, he still accounted for four touchdowns, um, had, a, had a pretty solid third quarter. And, but it was just, you know, sort of fits and starts for the offense. They, they never just had a rhythm until late in the game. And at that point, it was, it was kind of a desperation mode. Yeah, I think Arizona State did to, to Herbert in the Oregon passing offense what Oregon did to Josh Allen in the Wyoming passing yeah. offense the week before. It just You hit him a few times, but you get him moving around. You get him feeling a little uncomfortable in the pocket, anticipating a pass rush. Because 
uh, even though they had some injuries in their front seven, they, they bring a lot of heat and they still got a lot of talent. I mean, their D-line was big. I, you know, seeing them up close, I was impressed just with the size of their D-line. Um, and they got after it. So, you know, just two weeks in a row we've seen, you know, if you, you, if you can get a quarterback moving around, um, you can get him off his game, inclu in including really talented passers like Josh Allen of Wyoming and, and Justin Herbert of Oregon. So he still had some balls, too. He put on guys' hands that were dropped. I mean, his numbers could have been even better. And a really gutty performance at the end to, to give Oregon its only lead of the night and, and uh, put the Ducks in position to, to pull one out and kind of kind of escape with one. But but it was not to be. Came up inches short also on a, on a fourth and three play where, where he was only able to get a couple yards. And um, you know that, that essentially ended the game. Royce Freeman um, was effective. He just didn't get the ball a whole lot because Oregon only ran 63 plays in this game. And as we mentioned, when you're second and long and third and long, too many times last night, Royce would get a nice chunk on first down, first or second down, and then a penalty would kind of just wipe it out. And he was uh, efficient, 15 carries for 81 yards. He had some uh, receiving yards as well. Um, he's going to be fresh for next week. I mean, that's probably the silver lining. He did not see a lot of workload yeah. last night. There was a lot of people really concerned with his workload through three games, so he did he did get to avoid some of that, uh, so not take some of those hits that he had taken the first couple of weeks. You know, his touchdown should be noted, obviously, sets the Oregon career uh, record, 54th career rushing touchdown, breaks the Michael James record, Michael James immediately on Twitter, uh, tipping his hat, so that was pretty cool. Uh, you know, uh, certainly not to be overlooked in that play is Jalen Red, who made his debut oh, as goodness. a true freshman. Keenan Lowe, uh, absolutely, uh, a little guy making a big block. Um, they, the Ducks ran that uh, quite a bit uh, last night. Sweet plays with two backs. We saw some situations where Freeman was the lead back for for somebody else. In that situation, Red's the lead back on a sweet play, takes a guy out. Uh, Freeman comes in with the record-setting touchdown. So uh, a, ni a nice debut for Red. Uh, didn't get to do much with the ball in his hands, but uh, but made his presence felt. The offense took a, a lot of the blame uh, post game in the locker room. Jake Hansen put it on the offensive line. The the defense also, you know, took some blame. They they gave up too many big plays in this one at the end of the day. But overall, I, I thought they did a really good job against the run of Arizona State. They've got some talented players. We talked about it going into this game how these would be the best athletes that Oregon has faced. And Balaj is a is a big time back in the Pac-12. The Ducks, you know, were able to sort of handle him and at least contain him. It was those deep shots down the field where Arizona State really, uh, you know, the, the young defensive backs have, have played very well up to this point, but they got picked on last night. Yeah, you know, when, when they saw 15 or 4 Oregon's true freshman corners, they were going after those guys. And, uh, and, and they did make a lot of plays, but, and they're going to make a lot more in their careers. But, uh, you know, you, you get it. You get it if you're an Arizona State's offensive coach and staff saying, hey, where's some matchups we think we can try to take advantage of? Um, you know, I, I wouldn't throw at Thomas Graham a whole lot later in his career because I think he's going to get some things figured out. Yeah. But the fact that he ties as Oregon's leading tackler tells you how much they were going to, to, to throwing at him. Um, he was on, and he was on Harry a yeah, lot. Yeah, uh, tough matchup. And yeah. Harry's a Harry's going to play on Sundays. Yeah. So, and and Thomas might end up playing on Sundays as well, the way that he's come out of the gate. But that that's a really tough matchup. A big physical receiver. There were times where I, where I think Thomas was intentionally trying to interfere yeah. to keep him from catching balls because he had seven catches for 170 yards in this one but he'd still catch it right. so I mean he was just a beast out there overall it was it kind of it was kind of two two different games for me you know you, one you have a start kind of like the first game of the year that Southern Utah game where it just felt like the defense wasn't quite ready to go on that first drive and and uh, Arizona State marches down the field and you're like uh oh um, but then they really tighten things up after the first quarter what you've really got is a solid defensive performance marked by a couple of chunk plays which is not that unusual um, so you either take away those two ch big chunk plays in the third quarter or the slow start in the first quarter, and you've got a pretty good defensive performance. But unfortunately, the combination of the two, I, they really settled in in the second quarter. I mean, that was really, really impressive, the way they buckled down considering the start. Um, you know, and I, I just think one thing you have to credit is the way this team responded to being down. Yeah. Um, I think we saw, we saw times last year where – uh, the Ducks would fall behind, and that kind of felt like it. Uh, these guys fought and clawed to stay in the game, rallied defensively while the offense got its stuff together, and then the offense started to score uh, in the third quarter to respond when the defense gave up some more play. So, so that was a positive sign to uh, j just the battle that you saw, the compete level. Yeah, we mentioned, we talked about it a little bit at halftime how, you know, you mentioned it, Arizona State just goes down the field and, and scores at, at 
you know, extremely easy, too easy. Yeah. But when you look at the halftime stats, they, they only had 17 at the break. And Oregon was able to, to make some big, big plays defensively to just sort of, uh, you know, they were on the field a lot in that first half. And they were able to sort of gut it out and, and make stops when they needed to and give the offense a chance. Unfortunately, we saw this so many times last year, and, you know, not want to beat a dead horse here, but win the coin toss, opt to receive, and then go three and out and then give up a touchdown. Right. And then to start the second half, since you've, you've opted to receive, the other team gets the ball, they get a touchdown. So Arizona State essentially gets 14 points off of a coin flip, right. and they win by two. So that, Team defer on Twitter gets more ammunition yeah. For, well, yeah, it's, <laughs> for next week. <laughs> and I was, you know, to, to be honest, I'm, I'm always a fan of, of, you know, getting the ball yeah. and, and going down and, and, and really sort of setting the tone and setting the pace of the game. But when you go three and out, it just it, it yeah. really does kind of suck, suck the, no, the wind you under You understood the mentality of it. Hey, attack, we're going to attack, yeah, we're going to sure. score, we're going to express confidence in our guys, we're going to take a lead, we're going to the, you know, strike the first punch, get these guys back on their heels. But, yeah, so many times last year it, just, it didn't happen, and that became so demoralizing. Um, and so, yeah, to see it, to see it happen again uh, was frustrating. But, again, uh, kind of the compete level was there, and they kept battling, yeah. and, and – and you know, got a break obviously with the muffed punt before halftime, but then capitalized on it and, and kept themselves in the game, kept fighting, kept making plays. Um, and I and I do think Herbert set the tone in that regard, just running for tough yards, taking hits, uh, and, and still putting the team on his back a little bit and and trying to lead him to that victory. Individual defensive performances that stood out. Jalen Jelks had a career yeah. night. Unfortunately, it came in a loss, but three sacks, five tackles for a loss. He he didn't have a sack coming into the season. Uh, and he had one tackle for loss. Now he's ranked in the top 25 yeah. in the country in tackles for loss. Just a monster game for him. He had eight tackles. And when you see a, a, you know, a down lineman on the defensive line like that making that many plays, um, it really, uh, you know, he, he was a guy that was out there a ton. Uh, the time of possession was, was ex extremely they skewed in, fa place. in favor yeah. of Arizona State. And, and Jalen Jelks was bringing it all. He's going to be a guy who there's going to be some nights that aren't great matchups for him, you know, because he is a lighter defensive end for a, for a, uh, in this system for a 3-4 end, but man, he got after it and played tough, and he was gimpy a little bit and still getting after it. Yeah. You know, between Hollins and Moy, and now Jelks with the big game, um, and one of the second half adjustments the Ducks made, they brought McGraw, Metro McGraw in at, at uh, safety, and we're bringing him off the edge a lot, and that was really giving Arizona State a lot of trouble. Manny Wilkins, their quarterback, uh, was really put under duress, and as we've talked about before, when you get a quarterback moving around under duress, you can you can really affect his game. So I thought that was an adjustment that really paid off. I got a buddy of mine who, who I uh, grew up with in the California Bay, Northern California Bay Area, uh, who's a cow guy, looking ahead to this weekend's matchup. Uh, I said, so what do you think is going to happen? His first question was, how well do you guys get after the quarterback? And I was like, well, after this week, I think, you know, the Ducks get after the quarterback pretty yeah. good. So um, certainly an encouraging sign going into, uh, going into next week's matchup too. Adam Stack, the freshman, true freshman yeah. punter, put five punts inside the 20 in this one. Yeah, his best game of the season. And, you know, that was, that was really good to see. I thought the coverage uh, on punts was, was decent as well. Punt return, still, uh, still, the Ducks still trying to find their way there. Another area where penalties, yeah. too, in the return game. You just, you know, have to be cleaned up. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, that's, you're in the middle of a play, you're trying to make a play. I thought Kalana Pelu got really dogged where he just put a guy on his back and maybe it looked like holding, but he, I thought he just buried the guy with a great block late in the game. So, um, but if, you know, if those things are getting called, you got to do whatever you can to make sure your technique's so good that there's no question as to how you went about it. So, um, you know, a lot, lot to clean up in all three phases, but, but pointing out stack is good because that's a guy, you know, your punter, um, you know, they're expected to do their job and, and you really only get talked about if you, if you screw up and there'd been some inconsistency. So it was, it was nice to see him have a good game. Quarter of the way through the 2017 season, Oregon is at three and one. They have their uh, home opener of, of conference play against Cal coming up on Saturday. That's a 735 kick. Uh, on FS1, so a late night at Autzen, another Pac-12 after dark, and uh, Pac-12 after dark definitely lived up to its billing uh, in Tempe, unfortunately, for Oregon. I had a guy hit me up at the end of the game say, I was heading down to the field there to start the fourth quarter. He goes, well, what's your prediction for Pac-12 after dark? I said, well, multiple lead changes. I wish I'd been more specific because there were multiple, but it didn't work out in Oregon's favor. Rob and I will be back uh, throughout the week with the Quack Minute. If you have any questions or comments for us, you can get to us on Twitter. I'm at McNamara UO. He is at Duck Football. Until next time, we'll see you.